Railroad engineers, have you ever come across anything creepy or weird on the tracks while driving your train? Best friend works as an engineer conductor track inspector for a small railroad. Not anything scary, but the worst I heard about is when one of the elevators they work with had a silo explode while someone was on top of or in it. I don't remember which. Also, the stories of workers slipping and getting run over by the train, not doing things safely tend to scare the daylights out of me. One time they caught a kid dragging his bike across the tracks, underneath of the train. They only saw him in the mirror when they started to move and he scurried out, and the head guy hopped off and chewed the kid out. ETA I forgot about the time they pulled into their way and found a couple of 18 20 year old boys having a bonfire who then threatened my friend who was engineer at the time to get off of their property. So he called the fire department and his boss, who came out to inform the boys that they were trespassing. In the time it took him to get there, the boys had called their daddy who showed up and called the cops on the train crew for supposedly trespassing. Remember, this is in between two tracks and a Y, and got himself in trouble. People are smart. Class 1 freight conductor. A few things. 16 year old with his head and shoulders 50 feet up the track, with his body laying beside the track next to us. Friday night yard job we saw two males having sex in the middle of a tunnel, just crap faced, trying to wave us by like we were not a train on tracks, just laid on the whistle until they left. I remember Ray crewing a train that had killed someone, and spending an hour looking in the bush for their hand. I didn't find it, then stepping in something that was red with hair. Going north we hit a moose, not too far from the bunkhouse, called up on the radio, someone came down and grabbed it, cleaned it up and we all ate it that night. I'm sure there is more, but it all blends in after a while, takes a lot to stand out. Well, my grandfather used to work on the railroad as an engineer, he always tells me the story about how he almost hit a house, and it wasn't a dad joke. They were moving this double wide across the tracks and they were being particularly slow about it, considering a giant freight train was barreling down the tracks of them blowing its horn. About 10 yards out, they finally got all the way across the tracks. My grandfather said he almost crap himself. That's pretty much his weirdest story. Weird yes. I was privileged enough to see the locally famous pounder. We're traveling down the tracks when my engineer spots a dirt bike up ahead by some large bushes. How that's weird, no one around, as we are both looking out my side of the cab we get to the other side of the bushes and lo and behold, there he is in all his glory, wearing nothing but riding boots and beating off as furiously as no man should, I'm not talking self love here either, I'm talking power beating it like it owes you money, as an added bonus he was bending over and slapping playing with his butt too, so that was nice. Worst part was we were on a 10 mile per hour slow order so we couldn't even make a fast escape. It was one of those sights that's so horrifying you can't look away. Another weird one was almost running over a passed out man lying head on one rail and legs over the other. I'll post that story after I work out lol. Not so weird, I've hit two vehicles. A couch, shopping carts, a boulder, deer, elk, moose, cows, porcupines, rabbits, dogs, Cats, tons and tons of birds although it's usually them flying into us. I work with people that have hit pedestrians, cougars, not the older insatiable ladies type, horses, bears etc. Somewhat relevant, I am a station attendant I have a few stories. Found a dead kangaroo on a train so I had to lock off the carriage to the train. Had to stop a transgender lady from being on the tracks who was attempting to commit suicide. I think it was a bad breakup. Trains were cancelled so she wouldn't be hit managed to calm her down and convinced her to get up and call a friend to meet her. Had to stand in the way of a deranged woman who threatened to jump in front of a train until the police arrived. Had a homeless person steal an artificial plant after I stopped him from breaking into one of the station shops. A lady's handbag managed to pull an escalator step out she wanted her handbag damages to be paid by the rail company. We said only if she paid for the repair of the escalator. Lots of sex and sex toys in strange places. There are others but I think that is enough. I have two stories. One, I work in the electric traction department of Amtrak in the northeast. One night we had a report of wire theft in a remote location along the Harrisburg run and we were sent out to investigate. Typically the work crews get there before the police, 
so we'll usually hang back a bit until the men with guns get there in case the perpetrator is still there. We show up and see some wire hanging and some guy laying on the ground. We assumed he hit a live wire, got fried, and mid now oh dead. We walk up and shout to the guy, but we don't get a response. After about 10 minutes, the police show up and start taking pictures of the scene. One cop grabbed a stick and poked the dead guy a few times just to make sure. No movement. Definitely dead. The cop with the camera takes a picture of the dead guy. When the flash goes off, the dead guy jumps up, screams the loudest scream I've ever heard, and takes off running. The cop with the stick starts chasing after him with the stick above his head, while his partner and our crew just stand there trying to figure out what the frick just happened. 2. I was on a standby crew at night during a storm with two other guys. I was put on a piece of equipment called a cat car, while the other two guys decided to hang out in the truck, with the cat car running to keep it warm. I decided to lock up and take a nap. I locked both doors with padlocks on the inside so there was no way anyone could get in without me letting them in. A few hours later I awoke to some heavy wind and decided to check with the other guys to see if our supervisor had called with any trouble. When I got to the door, the lock was missing, but I couldn't open the door. The same with the other door. I called the other guys to come help and when they got there they asked how I managed to lock the cat car from the outside. If you're not quite following that, the padlocks that were originally on the inside, locking the only two doors into the equipment, were now on the outside. The three of us couldn't figure out what happened, but it creeped me the frick out. My grandpa was a train engineer and the weirdest story he told me was when he was driving a train somewhere through Alabama and saw a dead body on the side of the tracks. He said the man looked homeless and had severe facial damage and was laying by the tracks covered in blood. He did call the police but said he heard nothing of what happened after. Finally a question in my area. Now to think of something weird. I've gotten thin. In my short career of 6 years working in Australia, the only thing that amounts to anything remotely funny was when I hit an emu in the outback. It's not strange to hit a few kangaroos or goats but this day an emu stepped in front and it exploded into feathers. I mean they went everywhere. Around the door frames and stuck in the windscreen wipers. It's hard to put into words but thinking back, it was a had to be there moment. Automated rail track inspector here. I have worked on inspection vehicles all around the world, and actually have not seen as much weird stuff as some people who've already commented. The weirdest for me was on a track in Philadelphia. I was riding with a TME on the rear deck. He was a really cool guy and was pointing out all the landmarks next to the track. Mostly these were rocky references, but I hadn't seen the film in ages and the locations were lost on me. We were driving up and down the same stretch of track all day, near the Rockies gym if I recall correctly. It was really run down, and it looked like we were driving through a landfill site with all the city rubbish just poured down the embankment. On this trip the TME was watching out and was uncharacteristically quiet. Out of nowhere he shouts to the driver to sound the horn, and out of nowhere all these crackheads just appear. There were guys walking around spaced out, women with their tea out, needles hanging out of arms, that type of scene. That sight really messed with my head, it was the lowest form of humanity. I asked the guy WTF, he said that around this time each day the dealer visits that area, so all the homeless guys living in that crap get their high on, woman, and men, will do anything to get their hands on that crap, they sound their horn so that they can see the people. Who usually get up and start walking about. If they didn't they worry that a high hobo will just walk out in front of them. Now, here's the weird crap. We entered a tunnel, and at the other end the land is cleared out, and there are allotments up the embankment. For like 500 meters past the tunnel the land is all clean and organized and marked out with crops and plants growing. There are guys standing watching us pass holding pitchforks and other gardening equipment. The TME explained that these were pensioners from the same project. They cleaned up the land and used it to grow crops and food. They were standing by the tunnel to guard from the sea kids on the other side. Best and worst of humanity separated by a tunnel. Another experience was traveling around California, or Arizona. The track led us around this small lake. On the lake were a whole load of flatbed boats with small houses on them all lined up like a street. They even marked out their boundaries. There didn't appear to be any roads leading up to it, if there was it would have been a 20 mile dirt track. I did take some photos of that, I'll try and dig them out. 
The most beautiful thing I ever saw was traveling around Lake Donna in the snow. The snow was covering the track so you just felt like you were floating over the snow. The scenery in that area of the world is stunning. A close second to that is near me in the UK. There is a heritage track where the rail travels through the center of a large water reserve. Stunning. Not a railroad engineer, but the last time I went on a train, it was from Seattle to California. On the second night, we suddenly stopped and were waiting for a while. Apparently there had been a naked woman running along the train track and laid down and let the train go over her. I looked out the window after we stopped and heard the news. Well sure enough she was outside, looking right at me. I was 10 and I was scared as frick. Slightly off topic but I'm curious. Were any of you the conductor engineer of the train that hit my brother? It was Labor Day 2014, about 5.30 am. CN line through Lake Zurichill. He's actually okay now, just curious to see if anyone here was involved. I worked as a general laborer at the port over the summer helping move rail cars filled with grain. The cars in the port move pretty slowly compared to when they're out traveling the countryside. But that makes incidents that do happen all the more terrifying. The only incident I saw with my own eyes was a rat get pinched under a wheel and have its left side burst open and its entire insides popped out and land next to the track still in rat form. Other incidents at the port that I've been told by the regulars that have worked there for 50 years. Worker was walking to work one day, early morning shift, so it's still dark out, and tripped over something. Looked down and saw a severed human head just staring blankly up at him. Turns out some guy had commit suicide by jumping off the overpass into the oncoming train, and parts of his body went everywhere. Another guy commit suicide by laying a small red towel down over one of the rails and laying on his back, face up, with his neck over the track and arms crossed across his chest. Then he just waited for a train to come. They found him in the morning, and he hadn't moved an inch. This is part of the track where the trains go pretty slowly. He definitely would have felt it for a split second at least. On a lighter note, there was apparently an infamous train tagger that were graffiti trains with comic strips so that you couldn't watch the trains go by and read the comics. Conductor for CSX here. Weirdest was we almost hit a cow bull. It's night time and we're going along and a stretch of woods comes up and we turn off our lights to see the signal better and there is a big black spot on the rails up ahead. You can see light off the rails for a long time, and it is starting to shift a bit so engineer hits the lights and crap you not was a massive black cow bull walking across the rails it was weird. I've seen tons of deer coyote and other small Ohio animals, weed, 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 sorry for format spelling I am on my phone. Train driver from Denmark here. In my experience the tracks send out a vibe that brings all the people wearing tin foil hats to us. That or the Danish DMV just won't issue reverse lessons to batch it crissy people. My uncle was an engineer for years. He said that severed limbs were a very common place find on the tracks. He also said that when hitting cows you just ducked below the windows and would wait for the unfelt pop, like a big meat filled balloon. Second engineer on intermodal freight trains between South and West Australia for 4 years. Highly remote part of Australia with extreme temperatures all year round. Most unusual things I have witnessed. 1. Thousands of dead kangaroos. 2. Aboriginal communities living off the grid and naked. 3. Weird flashes of light. Multiple colors. 4. Cars dumped on the track, which we have no choice but to hit. 5. Large commercial plane with no decal in a very unusual spot. Dessert basically. And yes like others have said many drunk men passed out near tracks. Large commercial plane with no decals in the middle of nowhere. Conspiracy in progress. The creepiest thing we found was probably a jawbone. Yes it was human. Been there for a while. Likely from a suicide. Oh and also a dead cat that had got caught in the cable run. Working on London Underground you don't really find much creepy stuff. It's mostly just stories people spread around about ghosts and stuff. And plenty of corpses and or body parts. We often got called to incidents to make sure no bits of bone were going to block up points. Not me. Weird, or creepy but I'm telling it anyway. My dad is a retired engineer for Union Pacific. Years ago he saw a coyote feeding on a deer carcass near the tracks. The coyote got startled by the oncoming train and dropped the chunk of meat he had in his mouth. 
The coyote runs back a few paces when my dad sees a big hawk swoop down and snatch up the chunk of meat and fly away. I worked in a rail yard, not out on the rails themselves as an engineer or conductor, but we saw a few interesting things. My buddy saw what he thought was a black garbage bag laying inside the well of an intermodal car. We have to remove any debris, as the shipping containers won't fit in properly. He reached in to grab it and quickly pulled it up only to discover it was a dead vulture. Feathers fell off, and he dropped it and began screaming and running down the tracks. I was hysterical. I told him he still had to get it because it was on his side of the train. Best story though was working the overnight shift. Train came in and was parked. A few hours later I see a disheveled man walking around looking lost. I had heard stories that we occasionally still get hobos riding the rails. And this gentleman was my first. Official railroad policy is to call the cops and have them arrested for trespassing. But the unwritten rule was if it appeared they were not trying to steal or vandalize anything to just escort them off property. I asked the guy if he's looking for the exit, and he said he was. I pointed it out to him and he thanked me. He turns and says hey man, where the heck am I? I've been riding the rails all day, fell asleep, I had to get the heck out of Baltimore. I looked at him and said Baltimore. He looked confused. Apparently he got on the train at the rail yard across town, rode over to a classification yard, fell asleep, and woke up in our yard across town. 6 hours and he had gone about 5 miles. He was pee. I was trying not to laugh as he was muttering to himself out the gate. Well this will probably end up buried but I'll tell the story. I am a freight conductor. We hit a young lady walking between the two main tracks at like 5 in the morning. That sucks and dead bodies are creepy on their own but the craziest part was that I thought we hit two different people. The woman that I saw was white heavy set and in her late 40s she was walking toward the train leaning out in front of us. When myself and the brakeman walked back to find the woman what we found did not match what I saw. She did not go under the train so she was mostly in one piece. We found a Latin woman who was very thin and I later found out in her early 20s. Now I thought I was crazy but the brakeman started asking me if we had hit two people and described the woman in her 40s the same as I had seen her. Needless to say we only hit one person he and I were convinced that this young girl was possessed by some evil entity. The face I saw before we hit her still pops into my mind occasionally it was evil, twisted and full of pain. I work in association with NS but not for them per se. One day we get a call saying there was a man trapped in a train car that was locked in there for two days. We thought they were kidding until our manager called us to go have a look. We get out there and found out the guy was a hobo from the other side of the state. Some kinds forced him on the train and locked him in. Hey hey hey. Former Gandhi dancer, track repair man, for the CN here, there is some pretty weird crap out there depending on what cities you run through, mostly bodies, human or animal. One derailment I was called to was because someone had lit about 100 feet of track on fire and damaged the ties. When the train passed over it pulled the spikes right out and the rails flopped over. Also I was on site when a washout happened. We were there because the ballast was old and not draining correctly and as I drove the truck over a section I looked out to see the whole embankment just slide out from under the track. Nature is a scary bee. Also I've become really good at telling what animal a ribcage belongs to. Now I have a desk job. Sometimes I miss the field. My father-in-law is an engineer for MRL Montana Rail Link. Guy has seen the most gnarly stuff. He's seen people commit suicide by laying down on the tracks well after the train could ever think of slowing down. He said it just rips them apart like a nonchalant tear in a shirt. He's seen bears and bison and elk and kinds of wildlife get exploded not paying attention or freezing on the tracks. Worst part is that he and the crew have to do clean up and police reports. Conductor of passenger rail here. Now that means I don't see nearly as much railroad as engineers freight conductors but I've seen enough. There isn't so much as creepy anymore because a lot of things that happen up there are so common i.e. Hitting people. Hitting every type of wildlife ever. And seeing people where you never thought someone would be at 3am because they like trains. The only thing that still makes me uncomfortable, other than trespasser strikes that are kids or non-suicides, is when it's super foggy out. Now when visibility is limited and you're still going 70 plus into a wall of fog, 
I have to leave the head end. It's something about the speed and not knowing what's 100 featuring ahead of you and having full faith in the signals and equipment. My dad was a special agent. Detective. People stealing the signal wire were a big problem. Sometimes they would cut the wrong wire and he'd have to call someone to recover the body. Once Casey worked, thieves would wait at the base of a mountain for the piggyback train. When it slowed down they would jump on and go to the UPS trailers and just start throwing packages out. Then go by later and pick them up. You'd be surprised at the things shipped UPS. Machine guns for example. Frequent Amtrak rider here. I've seen more Texas red eyes and bare asses than some internet butt pee fetishists. Also some pretty obvious M labs. Homeless bridge dwellers don't wipe and rich dude brass and woo girls along waterfronts have some very white cottage cheese asses. Oh and homeless camps. It's like the freaking great depression but the government won't admit it. The saddest thing I see quite often is people tie dogs to the tracks. Like fight and bait dogs. To anyone that does that, get fricked. I can deal with a lot, but hitting a creature that is stuck on the tracks against their own will bothers me. Seriously, go frick yourself. It's not my story, but my granddad worked his way up from a station cleaner to a signal operator. At one stage in his career, he was responsible for cleaning up after suicides. Now if somebody jumps in front of a train moving at speed, two things can happen. You can fall in front of the train and get crushed by its wheels. This is nice and clean because the heat of the wheels, caused by friction against the tracks, cauterizes the wound, and all the cleanup crew needs to do is scrape you off. Lovely jubbly. This story concerns a fellow who hit the train at height, and was splattered across the windscreen. Grandad and his boys were sent to find all the bits and put them in a bag. They looked all day, and couldn't find the head. Eventually it grew dark, and they postponed the search. The next morning, they didn't have to look long. The crows had done the job for them. This guy's head had been launched two stories up onto an old water tower, where it had somehow come to rest. Now, my granddad may have been bullshitting, but what creeped me out the most about his story was how much it amused him. When my dad was a kid, he and his friends were walking along the railroad tracks one day. They heard the train coming so they ran and hid in the bushes while it passed. Afterwards, they went back to what they were doing and about 5 minutes later came across what he says is by far the worst thing he has ever seen in his life. Someone tied up two dogs and left them on the tracks. They were both freshly decapitated. He still wishes he wouldn't have gotten there sooner to save them. Welp I think I've had enough reddit for today. I was driving down a rural road in Wyoming, going from one drilling rig to another. This was in the Powder River Basin so there's coal mining going on too and many train tracks that carry all that coal away. So I'm driving a pickup with a guy named John. There's a truck pulling a low boy ahead of us. He's got a tractor on the low boy. We come to the train crossing, which is pretty rough. The low boy starts to crawl over the tracks, then stops. He got hung up on the tracks. I stop for a minute and ask John, hey, should we stop and help? John says, heck no. He did it to his own dumb butt, so, he's the boss, so I keep going. We go down about a mile and the road curves around and then starts heading back the way we had come. We were pretty close to the rig, but not so close that the rig noise could drown out the sound of a train whistle. I look back at the tracks and that low boy is still sitting right where we left him. Holy crap John, there's a train coming and that guy's still on the tracks I stopped the truck. Quick, drive up that hill so we can see better. He's the boss so I go. As I am climbing the hill, unable to see anything, I hear a noise. Not sure if it's the rig or not, but something. We get over the hill and can't see. So we do our thing on the rig and start heading back. Train is stopped on the tracks. I stop the pickup and start walking to get around the train. I was so scared that there was gonna be death and mayhem on the other side. But if there was, I figured we were the last people to see that guy alive so we'd better go see. Got around the train and it was all good. The train barely nicked the truck, knocking it askew. But the low boy and tractor were sitting there just fine and the driver was okay too. I often wonder if we had stopped. If we would have all been so engrossed in trying to get that low boy off the tracks if we would have even noticed the train coming. I'll never know. But it was still a weird experience for me. New conductor here. 
can confirm that the people you see sitting in their cars near the tracks are definitely fapping to trains. We call them FOMAs. <laughs> Creepiest thing I ever saw was in West Philly. Someone cut a pit bull's head off and stuck it on a sticks in the shape of a cross beside the track. They stuffed fruit and flowers in the body where the head was and spread flowers around it. There was an unlit candle at the base of the cross. Looked like some fricked up voodoo crap. I worked for a short line in the 80s. A girl crashed into the middle of our train at a crossing. The Mustang was rolled several times and completely destroyed. She got out wearing only a wedding veil, nothing else. A boy got out wearing only tighty witties. She was crying saying her boyfriend was gonna kill her. But he seemed calm. We didn't understand until the owner of the car got there. Her boyfriend. The kid who was bleeding ran away through the woods with car owner in hot pursuit. What a day. I have a number of family members who run trains. They seem to all have a story of looking into someone's eyes the moment before the train hits them. It's a horrible thing to experience while just doing your job. Drunk people and kids mostly. The drunk people die. The kids are often having sex. Sometimes they die too. Don't freaking walk on the railroad tracks. Not so much a story as it is a factoid. An uncle of mine worked on the Santa Fe and has many friends who worked with him as engineers and conductors. Anyway, back in the day when it was still the Santa Fe Railroad, whenever a cow got hit by a locomotive, the railroad would pay the farmer $100 in compensation. No questions asked. The problem was that farmers would then take their old and sick cows that were either too old for milking or too sick for butchering out to the tracks. They'd leave old Bessie on the tracks until she got hit by the next Santa Fe, then go and get his $100 from the railroad. Not an engineer, but I work on the production gangs. Last year one of my operators calls me saying he's not going to be doing his maintenance because it was too sketchy. I go over and check it out, and there were a bunch of needles and empty mickeys on the ground around where his machine was parked. Where we park our gang in London, on is a pretty rough part of town and he was directly under a road bridge. Not an engineer, but as a substance abuse counselor I had a caseload of engineers conductors who were sent to 90 day rehab. Most of these guys belonged to the union and were mandated to dry out after failing a random pee test. About 90% of the men I worked with had developed very serious addiction issues over the years due to the loneliness and amp solitude of the schedule that pretty much sets them apart from family for days at a time. An engineer conductor would typically receive notification on the same day and be out for 3 or more days one day conducting engineering a 100 plus boxcar train. 1 two or three nights in a motel then one day conducting engineering another 100 plus box car train back to the original station in addition to the solitude and lonesomeness these guys had yet another basic similarity in the horrific fact that each person had their own terrifying memory of killing someone by hitting them in various ways with the train that they were conducting engineering session after session case after case these men were disclosed to me that they couldn't escape the memory of the first time someone stalled out on the train tracks and wouldn't get out of their car, or were walking on the tracks, or got drunk and amp, passed out on the tracks, or jumped off a bridge into the train's engine, or tried to beat the train but came up short and got hit, or were walking on tracks opposite a train and not realizing another train was Cain 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 The primary issue each man had was that the train is just unable to stop fast enough. It was definitely an eye-opening experience. Never knew that side of the railroad. Friend of mine inspects rail cars for leasing. He was down in Texas in the middle of huge outdoor rail car storage lot. There are rows and rows of rail cars. He was inspecting the wheel bearings of each of the cars by getting under them and taking a look around. As he was inspecting one of the cars he starts hearing clink, 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 clink. When rail cars are parked they settle close to each other and their couplers are compressed. Some engineer had started moving the cars that he was under. He said it was terrifying because slow trains don't make any noise. And the only thing that kept him alive was the sound of the couplers expanding and jerking the previous cars along with it. He also had an experience with coyotes while inspecting cars as well. 1. When I was about 14 my family and I took a train trip down to Florida. From Philadelphia until the middle of North Carolina it went smoothly. Then we had to suddenly stop. 
No train personnel would give any answers as to why. We waited for about 2 hours until we started moving again. I happened to look out the window on the left side and saw what looked like a slaughterhouse of animal meat. To this day I have no idea what we hit or how many. 2. About 6 years ago two teenage girls decided to commit suicide via bullet train around where I grew up. My friend's father is a local firefighter and told us briefly about that day and what he saw. He had to walk about a mile or two up and down the track just to look for evidence of the two girls. He didn't get into great detail, but he did say that even though he had seen some crap in his 15 years on the job, the horrific scene mixed with their age messed him up mentally for a bit. Not an engineer but a train dispatcher. Weirdest thing I've had happen was a crew informed me they hit a trespasser. So I gathered all the information we need and gave it to my chief. Less than 5 minutes later the chief gets a call from emergency services. Apparently the guy they hit was able to call 9. 1. 1. From under the train and said his legs were cut off. Not scary. But there was a guy once at about 2am that was sitting in the middle of the tracks on a lawn chair smoking a cigarette. By the time we could make him out he was smiling the most demonic smile I've ever seen and flipping us off. Dead badgers. Every other animal corpse on the line quickly decomposes and gets dragged away by foxes. But not the badger. They become zombages. Instead of rotting, they swell up, ooze gooey tar, and stay there for months. Can't take a picture from the cab. But maybe a track worker will indulge us next time they encounter one? Train driver in Sydney, Australia here. Hit and killed somebody. At 115 kmph. Have you guys ever thrown a watermelon in the air and watched its splatters hit the ground? Multiply that by 100. Have a nice day. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.